The missile knows where it is at all times. It knows this because it knows where it isn't. Welcome to the Air to Air Missile Guide for War Thunder. In this video, I'll go over every type of AEM in the game with information on how they work and their pros and cons. This video will focus solely on the technical aspects, so I'll go over how they work. I'll explain how you should use them in a future bootcamp video, so stay tuned. The missiles in the game can be split up into four groups. Infrared, Radar Guided, Beam Riding, and Command Guided. We'll get to each of their distinctions in a bit, but first, let's talk about missiles in general. Every missile has some common parameters, namely mass, lock range, launch range, maximum speed, maximum overload, missile guidance time, and some details about their warhead. Mass is how heavy the missile is, the bigger the mass, the less maneuverable it is. Lock range is the maximum distance you can lock the missile at a target. The launch range is how far the missile can go in a straight line under perfect circumstances, at least in theory. In practice though, the range will be much shorter, thanks to stuff like altitude, speed, and how much the missile has to pull. Maximum speed is pretty obvious, it's how fast the missile can theoretically go, represented in Mach. Maximum overload is also quite simple, it's how much the missile can pull, aka how hard it can turn. Missile guidance time represents how long a missile can keep tracking a target. This is not how long the fuel lasts, it's how long the missile can keep tracking until its battery runs out. Some of the more advanced missiles can also have electronic counter countermeasures, or ECCM. This makes the missile resistant to electronic jammers, therefore making them more reliable. Now that that's out of the way, let's start with infrared missiles, the most common type in the game. IR missiles, also known as heat-seeking missiles, track their targets using an infrared seeker located on the nose of the missile. This seeker detects infrared radiation, which is produced by heat. Unsurprisingly, jet engines produce a large amount of heat, and thus infrared radiation. The missile's IR seeker detects this radiation and uses it to track the target's location. Think of the seeker's detection area like a cone. If one side of the cone has a higher heat signature, the missile will steer towards that side. This can have some downsides. For example, if the enemy is flying towards the sun, the missile will crave the forbidden heat signature and head off into space. Friendlies are also not immune to IR missiles, something the level 6 top tier premium owners know all too well. When compared to radar guided missiles though, they also have some upsides. IR missiles are fire and forget, so once you fire the missile you don't have to keep looking at the target. Ground clutter is also not an issue with them, so you don't have to worry about your angle of approach. And lastly, IR missiles don't give a radar warning to the enemy, so if they're tunnel vision you can easily score a kill. IR missiles can also be split up into groups, mainly by their guidance and their aspect. For the guidance, there are two options, caged and uncaged. Caged missiles require the target to be in front of the missile to be launched. Uncaged missiles though don't have this requirement. Once you lock the target, the enemy can be anywhere within the outer circle, and you can still launch the missile. This is thanks to their gimbal mounted IR seekers, which gives them a much bigger detection area. And as with the aspects, rear aspect missiles can only track targets from the back. All aspect missiles, though, use more sensitive and advanced IR seekers that can track enemies from any direction. If you have a choice between these groups, uncaged all aspect missiles are some of the best, while caged rear aspect missiles are better than nothing. And now we have radar guided missiles. They can be divided into two groups, semi-active radar homing and active radar homing. SAR missiles, unlike infrared missiles, need a radar lock in order to be launched. They don't have their own tracking systems and they rely on information from the launch aircraft. I'll talk about radar in a separate video, but a simplified explanation will have to do for now. In essence, radar works by bouncing radio waves off objects to determine their speed, distance, and direction. Radar guided missiles utilize this information to track the target. Therefore, the tracking accuracy of the missile depends on how good your radar is. When locking a radar guided missile, you'll see three rings instead of one or two. The ring in the middle indicates the quality of the lock. Make sure it's a complete circle before launching the missile, otherwise it might not track very well. This method too can have some downsides. For example, if you're diving on your target, the radar can be confused by the ground since the radio waves bounce off every surface. SAR missiles also require to maintain a radar lock, which can be a massive hindrance. Once you get your radar lock, the enemy will also receive an RWR warning, which will let them know you're trying to target them. Despite these drawbacks, radar guided missiles do have some upsides when compared to IR missiles. Since the missile itself doesn't need a tracking system, it can be lighter and thus can travel further. Radar guided missiles are also all aspect and immune to flares which can throw some enemies off guard. SAR missiles can be divided by their receivers, namely Pulse and Continuous Wave. The difference between them is how they interpret the signals they get from the launch aircraft's radar. Pulse receivers, much like their name, use short pulses of radar energy to track their target. Once the radar signals bounce back, they analyze the data and figure out where to go, using distance as their main source. Continuous Wave, or CW receivers though, use a continuous beam of radar energy to map out their surroundings. Thanks to the constant radio signals, they can determine where the target is and where they're heading, using speed as a main source. This is why chaff isn't as effective against CW SAR missiles, the velocity of an enemy dead and that of chaff is drastically different. Pulse signal SAR missiles though can easily be fooled by chaff, since the distance between the jet and the chaff is almost the same at the time of deployment. Radar guided missiles can also have improvements in their technology, such as initial onboard guidance and data links. If you lose your radar lock on a target after you fire, the missile will guess where the target will be, using its last known position, speed, and direction if it has initial onboard guidance. Data links, on the other hand, maintain a constant radio connection between the missile and the launch aircraft. Once you fire the missile in the lock, it can keep moving towards the general direction of the target. This can be incredibly useful, since it can dramatically increase the range of the 
the missile and also prevent enemy radar warnings from going off. If it's on a SAR missile, you will need to relock the target once the missile gets close, since they don't have their own tracking systems. And that's where the active radar homing missiles come in. These missiles have a built-in radar emitter, so they don't need to maintain radar lock from a launch aircraft. They do need a lock to be launched though. Once fired, they go towards the locked target's position, and when they get close, they activate their own radar and begin searching. At this stage, the missile will lock onto the closest target, which may be different from the original target you locked. Active radar homing missiles can have some very long range, allowing to snipe enemies from across the map. Next up we have the beam riding missile. Instead of a tracking system, the beam riding missile features a radar receiver on the back. This receiver gets information from the nose of the aircraft, which features a radar transmitter. By moving the nose of the plane, you can move the missile as well. As long as it's within the radar area, the missile will go until it either reaches a target or runs out of fuel. While they can't pull very hard, these missiles have the advantage of being immune to any sort of countermeasures. And lastly are the command guided missiles. These are some of the most basic missiles in the game. Much like the beam riding missile, command guided missiles don't have tracking systems, instead they're guided by the crew manually. This means you need to control the missile while also flying your aircraft, which can be quite difficult. Like the beam riding missile though, command guided missiles are also immune to countermeasures. And finally, the conclusion. All these missiles serve different purposes, so none of them are better than the other. SAR missiles are better for long ranges, while IR missiles usually pull harder, making them decent for dogfights. If you can, I'd suggest bringing both types into battle. Here are some of the best types of each missile if you have a choice between them. Thank you for watching, and happy April Fools!